Motor Week is made possible by Tire Rack. No sooner did the big American car enjoy a resurgence in popularity than the Middle East again plunged into war. This created new concerns about energy supplies and had some analysts again predicting the extinction of Detroit's largest products. But big cars are far from dead. Take the Mercury Grand Marquis, for example. Both it and its cousin, this Ford Crown Victoria, are all new this year. And contrary to the popular image of full-size sedans being outdated dinosaurs, these cars contain some of Ford's newest technology. But can even Ford's best efforts assure a place for these big cars in the 1990s? After all, it will be hard enough just finding a parking space for them. At almost 18 feet long, the Crown Victoria and Grand Marquis are two of the biggest cars on the American road. While both cars are substantially redesigned, they retain body on full frame construction. They're being introduced as early 1992 models. The Crown Victoria is the sleeker of the two and wears what are by now easily recognized as Ford family lines. The curves start at the smooth Taurus-like nose and continue in an unbroken line across the flush glass greenhouse. They end at a conservative yet aerodynamic tail. Inside, the Crown Vic is clean and airy. The full-size 114-inch wheelbase carries over from the previous car and allows the big Ford to be one of the few cars available today that can truthfully claim to be a six-passenger sedan. Dash layout is straightforward with lots of imitation wood trim. The Ford has standard analog gauges that offer much more information than we're used to getting in a big American family car. This optional digital cluster is also available. Stereo and heat controls are simple to operate, but you have to reach a bit for them. Retaining the long wheelbase means generous rear seat room. And while liftover is high, the deep 20.6 cubic foot trunk will easily swallow the biggest luggage. The Mercury Grand Marquis shares the same trunk and interior capacity, although the more upscale Grand Marquis has a simpler standard gauge package that offers only luxury car basics. Both Grand Marquis and Crown Victoria have a standard driver's side airbag and offer an optional one for the passenger. The Mercury split bench seat is wide and flat. Back support is good, but the bottom cushion is surprisingly hard for an American family car. Optional six-way power adjustments tailor the fit to any driver. Dash layout is slightly different in the Mercury, with the ventilation controls placed higher so they're easier to reach. The power radio antenna must be raised and lowered by means of a switch on the dash, something that you had best remember before you go through an automatic car wash. Outside, the Grand Marquis features a more conservative yet still aerodynamic look. Both the large chrome grille and slightly more formal roof line mark it as a part of the Lincoln Mercury stable. While these cars may differ a bit in styling, both are powered by the same engine. This 4.6 liter overhead cam V8 is the first product of Ford's modular engine program. It produces 190 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque, all with a smoothness that will surprise owners of previous big Fords. Buy the Grand Marquis optional handling package and you get a dual exhaust that boosts horsepower to 210. No one expects a 3,800 pound car to be that quick, but the Grand Marquis still managed to find 9.3 seconds 0 to 60 at our test track. The quarter mile took 17.1 seconds, ending at 83 miles per hour. Power delivery is as smooth as that of certain Japanese V8 luxury cars. The four-speed automatic transmission keeps the power flowing along to the rear wheels. Part of the chassis redesign included a new front suspension that substantially decreases the big car's tendency to wallow and roll in corners. There's now more usable grip, with the car feeling more like a mid-sized Taurus than last year's Grand Marquis. But the variable effort power steering, while offering sufficient feedback in most situations, is overridden in hard corners, requiring lots of muscle to control. The handling package includes the rear load leveling air suspension. It gives a soft but controlled ride and eliminated the expansion joint porpoising that we usually associate with this class of car. Interior sound measures a very low 63 decibels. Our test fuel mileage is 20 miles per gallon, 
with EPA estimates of 18 city, 25 highway. Four wheel disc brakes are now standard on this platform and ABS is optional. Our test car used that option to stop from 60 in a short 110 feet. The expected big car nosedive is very evident, but stability is good and the pedal feel plentiful. Despite the substantial improvements, prices have only increased an average of 2.7%. Crown Victoria base prices now range from $18,728 to $19,543. The Grand Marquis starts at $19,361 for the GS and goes to $19,789 for LS trim. That's half what you'll pay for the Lexus LS400. The big Fords match the Lexus in acceleration, even though they can't quite keep up in the corners. Both chassis offer lots of interior and trunk space, but the Ford's simpler dash may appeal more to traditional American car buyers. A more rational comparison would be to the Chevrolet Caprice. The six-passenger Chevy actually costs less than the big Fords. It does, however, have very radical styling. The Caprice accelerates slower, but has similar handling and standard anti-lock brakes. Hits for the big Ford start with their modern yet tasteful styling. We also like the substantially improved handling, smooth new engine, roomy, efficient interior, and still affordable price. Misses are the easily overridden power steering, an overly hard seat bottom padding, and a power radio antenna that may not survive the first trip to the car wash. On our safety check, the Crown Victoria and Grand Marquis pass with a standard driver's side airbag and available passenger side airbag. They also have rear shoulder belts and optional anti-lock brakes. With their moderate price tags and vastly improved performance, the Ford Crown Victoria and Mercury Grand Marquis will surely appeal to a large number of family and luxury car buyers. Ford has successfully applied new technology to an old idea to come up with cars that should please both the traditionalist and the young up-and-coming buyer, thus expanding its customer base and guaranteeing that there will be full-size V8 Fords and Mercuries in the showrooms for at least the next decade.